Hello and welcome. I'm Jason Summer, AI Solution Innovation Architect at Snowflake. I am thrilled today to share with you the semantic model generator for Cortex Analyst. If you're listening today, you are likely aware of Cortex Analyst, but let's start with that just in case. So what is Cortex Analyst? Cortex Analyst is a cutting edge solution designed to revolutionize how business users interact with their data. Cortex Analyst is exposed as a REST API and offers a conversational interface that allows users to explore structured data with ease. Unlike traditional BI tools that often require complex queries or reliance on data teams, Cortex Analyst empowers users to ask questions in natural language and receive accurate real-time insights. To get started with Cortex Analyst, one only needs a semantic data model in the form of a YAML file. Engineers at Snowflake, in conjunction with the Snowflake Solution Innovation Team, had developed an open source semantic model generator using Streamlit to assist you in taking your semantic model from zero to one and support further curation from there. In the video today, I'll walk you through how to set up this semantic model generator, generate your own semantic model from Snowflake data, refine it, and lastly, save it. Let's get started. Our first step will be to navigate to the GitHub repository for the semantic model generator. And we want to clone or get this repo locally. So I'm going to go to code and grab the URL. Here I have VS code. I'm going to run git clone and is downloading the project repo. Next, I want to navigate to the root directory of the project repo, and here I am. Um, now, if you like to keep your Python virtual environment separate, uh, go ahead and activate your respective environment. Now, to install all dependencies, I'm going to run a make command. If you don't have make on your machine, there are alternatives mentioned in the readme of the repo, so I would direct your attention there. So I'll do make setup admin app, and that will install all my dependencies. Next, we're going to deal with environment variables. Currently, the semantic model generator pulls Snowflake credentials from environment variables. In a future release, we'll be adding support for TOML files, similar to how you see a regular Snowpark session being created in the docs. So for now, go ahead and open up the project repo, and you're gonna have an example environment file. What you wanna do is grab the appropriate credentials for your account. I would consider the first one here as the default, and you want to drop them in a .env file right next to the example. I'll start that now to give you an idea. So I'm gonna copy these. I'm gonna add a new file call it .env, and I'm going to paste these in here. Now, what I'm going to do after I pause the video here in a moment is update all of these for my account. In the uh, readme and the associated articles, there are some links and some functions to find what your account locator and your host are. So please take a look at those to determine what these might be for you. Once you set your environment variables, we also recommend setting up MFA token caching to avoid these recurring multi-factor authentication pings you might get. And that can be done at the account level. Uh, once again, there are links in the articles and the quick starts for setting up that caching. Now we're ready for the good part. Let's actually run the Streamlit app. I'm gonna use a make command again. Uh, there are alternatives in the readme uh, if you don't have make. So make run admin app. And here we have the actual app. So what we're looking at here is the home page, and we'll be walking through the first two. The uh, last button here is going to be part of some subsequent videos. Uh, but to give you an idea, these will cover how to create a semantic file, given you will have a semantic layer in an external tool like dbt or looker. To start, we're gonna create a brand new semantic file. Uh, later on, we'll be coming 
back to the home page and clicking the second button to edit an existing semantic file. So I'll click this first button here. First, I'm going to specify a name for the semantic model. Note this does not mean the name for the file. When we save the file, we'll be setting that name then. So I'll call this customers. Max number of sample values determines how many sample values are extracted from the Snowflake columns when we generate the semantic file and use AI to infer different aspects about the data. And then I'm going to specify a Snowflake table to crawl to create this semantic file. And let's click Submit. Now when we click submit, the app begins generating a semantic model for the selected data. It fetches metadata, it uses Cortex large language models to infer additional context, and creates what you see here, which is the starting semantic file for us. Let's take a look at what this actually looks like. And for a really in-depth overview of what this contains, I would encourage looking at the Cortex Analyst semantic file documentation for additional details. But let's call out a couple aspects here. First is the filter section, which is commented out. If there are certain slices or filters you think your business users will want to use, you can use the filter section to add those as options. Uh, for now, we can leave it, we can delete it, uh, or we can go ahead and update it. From there, there are sections like dimensions, measures and time measures. And for each one of these columns, there's a generated description and then an option to add synonyms. Here are the synonyms you can add as a list and the description. Now we know this description is AI generated because a couple of indicators. One, there's a double underscore suffix and then a nice little comment. When you're going through and revising your semantic file, I strongly suggest actually adding synonyms that capture the nomenclature your business uses for certain terms, and then reviewing and revising these descriptions. For now, let's go ahead and validate. When I click that, it's going to check the semantic file and confirm that it's in the correct format for us to test. And as we see here with the confirmation, it's been validated. So now we're ready to actually test some questions. When we ask a question on the right, Cortex Analyst uses the semantic file reviewing on the left. Quite simply, this is where we can iterate on our semantic file and check results live. It's a very quick and easy way to do that experimentation. Our first question, let's ask, what is the average orders per customer? And here we see that it's thinking, it's looking at metadata, it's valuing different scenarios or ways to compile a SQL for us, and it's returned an answer. Every time we ask a question, it shows us its interpretation of that question. Great little troubleshooting piece. And then it shows us the SQL is generated. Great. Let's ask another one. What is the average customer tenure since their first order? Whenever a Cortex Analyst responds with SQL, like we see here, we're given the opportunity to add that SQL as what's called a verified query. The verified query repository is a section of the semantic file that should contain high quality pairs of questions and SQL answers that are intended to help Cortex Analyst improve its accuracy when we include them. For more information about verified queries, please see the associated links. Now, we see SQL here. As we examine it, we can see if one, it's right, and two, decide if we want to include it as a verified query. If we like the way it looks and it's a good example of a verified query, we can save it as a verified query. Now, alternatively, if it's not quite right, if we want to make some edits, we can click the edit button. And this will take us through a wizard 
that will help us make sure that the verified queries are formatted correctly and use the correct column names. And that last piece important here. You want to make sure that you're using the column names as shown here on the left, as opposed to the physical expressions you see on the right. And this allows us to provide a better way to communicate to the LLMs so it understands to a higher degree of accuracy. Why is that important? Well, we need to remember that LLMs learn very well by example. And so we want to make these examples we're providing as clear and concise and correct as possible. Now that we've saved that as a verified query, let's scroll to the bottom here. And we can see here there's a brand new section that has our first verified query. Awesome. So as I mentioned, this semantic model generator is a great tool to iterate and refine the semantic model. But now that we've made some adjustments, we've validated, we have added a verified query, we of course want to save it. So to do that, we're going to upload it to a Snowflake stage. Later on, when we're constructing the desired user-facing application that is powered by Cortex Analyst, we can take the semantic file directly out of Snowflake stage. Let's specify the database. And we're going to specify the schema. And lastly, this is where we specify the file name. I'll go ahead and click Submit Upload. Perfect. So let's recap. We've generated a brand new semantic file from a Snowflake table. We validated it, and now we added a verified query to it. Lastly, we've uploaded that draft semantic file to a Snowflake stage. Hypothetically, let's say you're doing this multiple times in multiple sittings, or you simply want to run a quick experiment with an existing semantic file. Let's show that process. First, let's reset back to home. Let's click edit an existing semantic file and let's find the one we just uploaded. And submit. And we're back to the original part of the iteration app we were at previously. We can make additional adjustments, add questions, add verified queries, uh, and finally upload a new model. Let's go ahead and click validate. And let's actually add a brand new measure to our semantic file to show how that works. I want to add a new metric or new measure that captures purchase recency of customers. So let me paste that in here. Now this new measurement purchase recency, it captures the months since a customer made their last purchase, but to make it a little extra fun, it's actually the inverse. So the lower the number, least recent, they have made the purchase. And if they've never made a purchase, we set it to zero. So let's validate to make sure that is formatted correctly. And let's ask a question about it. Let's ask, what is the average purchased recency ratio? And here we have the SQL, and it is using the correct expression here to capture purchased recency. And we have the average. And there you have it. You're now well equipped to start building and refining Cortex Analyst semantic files using our open source semantic model generator. We continue to add functionality based on user feedback, so please stay tuned. In fact, please see the associated videos that cover brand new features to translate existing semantic models in partner tools such as DBT and Looker. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more Snowflake developer content. Thanks for joining.